Yes. So the Khanna's reading is that it will include D, but sorry, C, but exclude A and B. And cannot do that. It will. It will. Otherwise, it will. Otherwise, it will lead yeah. to a situation. You are saying that. 370 is a permanent article. Well, we'll come to that later. Whether it's One minute, yes, that's your argument. <laughs> well, I've been, 370 I've is a permanent article yes. which cannot be undone by even with a concurrence. Let me forget that when I made that argument. Right now, you're just giving us the structure of the forget article. Forget that what I made that argument. That you're it giving us the structure. Yes. It is temporary on 26th of January 1950. Let's forget about anything else. It is temporary. Why? Because, mother, the constituent assembly will choose to. So it's temporary. There's nothing wrong with that heading, provided further that no such order, which relates to matters other than those referred to in the last preceding proviso, shall be issued except with the concurrence. You go to B1 and B2. So that was the law, the same template, now the orders for the rest of the provisions. Then read two mullets. It shall be placed before such assembly for such decision and may be taken there on same template of B and D mullet and they can reject it. They need not confirm it. That's how you that's how you retain sovereignty, which is the instrument of accession. And if it don't retain it, it's temporary. That's why temporary. Well, I'm just trying to explain with the you. structure of 370. Yeah. You, you complete clause three. Yeah. Then I have one question. Sure, but let, no, but we'll first there uh, you can complete. Otherwise, I'll be breaking your link. It's oh. on some unrelated area. Oh. Therefore. Notwithstanding anything in the foregoing provision, so Malad is notwithstanding the notwithstanding in the beginning of the article. Please, please note that. Notwithstanding anything in the foregoing provisions of this article, so notwithstanding the notwithstanding in 370, the president may by public notification declare that the article shall cease to be operative or shall be operative only with such exceptions and modifications and from such date as he may specify, provided that the recommendation of the constituent assembly shall be necessary before the president issues such a notification. So if the constituent assembly recommends it, namely, that we want to abrogate 370, then on that recommendation, the president will issue a notification. And this article is contained in sub clause 3, doesn't have to be in D. So that, according to me, is the architecture of 370. Sibyl, I have just one question on yes. this. Uh, B1 refers to those matters in the instrument of accession which have been ceded by the Maharaja to uh, the union, the dominion's power. B2 refers to all other matters in the union and concurrent list other than what is covered by 1. Fair enough. Now, suppose in the area of the union and the concurrent list, something is not covered by B1 or by B2. In other words, yes, yes. it's not ref referable to those subjects mentioned in the instrument of accession and it's not covered by B2 at all. That power is not entrusted to the state. B2 is all other lists, Mullahs. No, no. B2 says such other matters in the said list as with the concurrence of the government, the president may order That's specific. All, so all list, all matters in the list. Right, right. Of yes. course. It covers it's a residue. Everything, Everything, Yeah. So you have to take the concurrence of the state. Yes. Now, suppose it is not covered by B2 in the sense that there is no concurrence of the state, right? Yes. It's not covered by B1 yes. and you have not taken the concurrence of the state under B2. Correct. On such an aspect, the state legislature cannot exercise power because it's not in the state list. State le one second, I, Nizam, one, power second. The state. Nizam, one second. Power of the one state. second. Yeah. The state legislature, the, the state legislature is operating on the state list. And residuary power, Mullahs. Residuary power came in and when? Under what? Other way around, Mullahs. No. Kashmir, it was there from the beginning. But the, where does the residuary power find? Uh, yes, I'll show that to your Lord. This is part of the instrument itself. Instrument of accession. Yes, it is part but, of Mullahs. All, all orders of the government. No, but has specifically there's it's a. It's also part of the constitution. Mullahs, I'll show I that. just wanted to see whether it's part yes, of Yes, yes, you're always to take it, Mullahs. I'll because otherwise, that. there'll be a peculiar yes, situation. Yes. Where. Neither parliament can exercise power, I will nor can the state legislature I, I, I exercise power. I take your lordship's point, I will demonstrate yes. to your lordship that the residuary power was with the state legislature throughout and with the state government throughout. That was the condition on which Malad's, the accession took place. And I will demonstrate that to your lordship. That's what, that's, that's, it's a simple that's the least of my problems. Which is very different from what is subject matter of one and two. Yes, right. Because they do not deal with abrogation absolutely. of the article. Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. Your lordship is right. And therefore, when we when we read at that power, which is specifically conferred on the president, yes. then 
proviso, leave aside for the time being the proviso. Do you agree with that interpretation? No, I for, for the time being, just leave the proviso. Well, look, I can't read the constitution in this fashion. I can't even read an act in that fashion. Well, let's forget the constitution. How do I leave the proviso when proviso when the constitution is staring us in the face? No, no, no. My the a question Your was is putting to therefore me. clause three deals with abrogation of the article itself, which is need not the subject matter of one and two. No, it's subject matter of C. Article one shall apply to the state. No, the, correct, but it deals with complete abrogation of the article itself. I agree. And in that context, you may argue that your argument at the first fold was it will be only if the condition of the proviso is satisfied that three clause three will apply. Otherwise, if the conditions well, of the proviso are not satisfied, clause three will not that's apply. That's how your lordships have interpreted proviso since 1950, Malas. That's all that I can say. <laughs> I can't say more than that. A proviso may in some cases be an exception. A proviso may in some cases be an elaboration. There's a or, difference, Mother. Yeah. There, 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 it depends upon the nature of the, uh, uh, the, the provisos the, are sometimes changed that's colors. A proviso, Mother. The proviso not, that the recommendation the rule for a proviso in that sense. Provided provided that the recommendation of the legislative of the uh, constituent hmm. assembly shall be necessary. It's a restriction on the exercise of power. That's right. Con referred to in clause two, Mother. Speak way to interpret clause three to say that the power existed and then will vanish once the constitutional assembly of the state is no longer exists. Well, but you kindly read two Mullers. If the concurrence of the government of the government of the state referred to in para two, sub clause B or one, or the second proviso to D of that clause be given before the constituent assembly for the purpose of for the purpose of framing of the constitution of that's the purpose. Mr. Sibyl, you have contradicted yourself. When you refer to clause C, subclause C is an independent clause and clause D not applicable to clause C. No, no, then the second proviso will not apply. In both cases. And therefore only only the only subclause three will apply. Well, the point is clause two says that uh, even, clause three even, will apply. even for the purposes of those notifications. Anyway, we'll ask. examine that. Yes. Now, you have understood your line no, of argument. No, no, there is there is something that's missing, Mullahs. The proviso says provided that the recommendation of the constituents assembly of the state referred to in clause 2. Why are they saying that, Mullahs? The purpose is given in clause 2. Provided that the recommendation of the constituents assembly of the state referred to in clause 2 shall be necessary for the president before the president, before the president issues such a notification. It is necessary in and before he issues it. How can you say that it's explanatory or that it's it's, it's, it's an independent clause? It, it's, it, it specifies how it is to happen. It has to happen before that is, the permission has to be had before. You know, the reason why it refers, Clause 3 refers to the Constituent Assembly of the State referred to in Clause 2 is because Clause 2 refers to the Constituent Assembly for the purpose of framing the Constitution. That's correct. That's exactly right. my that's point. The, you, that's, the, that's your that, point. Yeah. You get that point. Yeah. Now, therefore, the reference, the recommendation of the, which Constituent Assembly, this makes it very clear that one and only constituent assembly which was formed for the purpose of framing of the state That's constitution. Right. Once the frame of the constitution was done, then that purpose of the constituent assembly, the constituent assembly is not like a permanent body, like parliament is a permanent body, the supreme right. court is a permanent no body. No doubt about it. It's, it's a body which has a specific purpose and thereafter it becomes functus officio, right. so to speak. Therefore, once the constituent assembly had fulfilled its purpose, then the proviso itself has no application. No, that's the. This is the problem, Malaj, with the, with the the problem there is then you are applying applying uh, three without the proviso and saying this is a blanket power. Then it's a uh, then Malaj, the president can do it anytime without without any consultation. Any, one thing just, which we must pass an order. Mr. That Mr. I integrate. I integrate. One thing, I, I, that's that. One Scholar. thing which we can Scholar. we have to also bear in mind is. All these provisions are in part 21. Part 21 has used three expressions, temporary, transitional, and special. Correct. Temporary provisions are those which are intended to be in existence for a limited period of time, That's right. but without a point of terminus, right? A temporary government servant. That person is temporary no, sure. for a limited period of time, right. but whose services are to be terminated. Until you are terminating the services of that person, that person still continues. Right. That's that broad concept you know, of temporary. Absolutely right. Transitional means something which necessarily has a terminus. That's right. 
laws comes to made an, earlier laws right. made earlier i'll show you some of the transitional provisions in this part right. and third is special right. now we'll see for instance after 370 we'll get some idea from the provisions after 370 say 371 special provision with respect to maharashtra and gujarat 371 a special provision for nagaland yes yes then we get 371 b special provision for assam correct 371 c special provision for manipur that's correct d for the state of andhra pradesh and telangana right e establishment of central university in ap f is special provision for sikkim which came in 75 right, right. g mizoram h special provision for arunachal yeah then i for state of goa j for the state of karnataka right now after these special provisions end we come to 372 right which continues continuance in force of laws. existing laws yes which then says shall continue in force until altered or repealed or amended by a competent legislature right. or by any other uh, like the penal code right it just continued in force until it is altered then similarly now we have 372a power of the president to adapt laws right. and it says the president may by order made before the 1st of november 1957 make such adaptations and modifications right so this was a transitional provision right. that the president had to make those adaptations by the 1st of november 1957 so it was a transitional provision after that the power lapses so similarly uh, 373 you know was then came the provisions relating to the judges judges who whose services had yeah. to be taken over by the union of india public service commissions so on and so forth and then 392 the power of the president to uh, remove difficulties right so therefore part 21 basically covers special provisions temporary provisions and transitional provisions right now it doesn't use the expression transitional in any uh, head note a marginal note to the articles but temporary and special are used in the marginal notes to specific articles of part 21 and 370 specifically uses the expression temporary that too malaj it so, too can we then by reading by saying that the power under clause 3 goes once the constituent assembly comes to an end really convert this into a permanent provision which it was never intended to be by the constituent that's one your lot chips are now putting to me it was never intended to be in 370 when it was put in it had to be a temporary provision it had to be malaj there was no there was nothing there at that point in time it had to be malaj it could never be a permanent thing So why did the constitution then put it in part 21 because malaj it is a separate it relates to a particular state where the, the two sovereigns have come together and made a compact which is incorporated and integrated no, no, part 20, part 21 does not deal only with uh, does not deal only with jammu and kashmir it deals with other states uh-huh. also i'm sorry i didn't get part 21 yes does not deal only with jammu and kashmir no of course not that's why i think it is a separate independent right. provision and has to be interpreted on its own terms You can't incorporate Malaj's concepts outside of 370 and integrate them into 370 and say this is how we'll read 370. 370 is not temporary. The you know, note expressly says it's temporary. No, it says temporary provisions with respect to temporary provisions. In other words, this is a provision which is temporary till such time as the Constituent Assembly decides this way or that way. That's the whole purpose, Malaj. Because when the Constitution came into force, there was no such thing as the Constituent Assembly even. How did the Constitution add this here? because there was an understanding otherwise why would you bring in the term constituent assembly in 370 it is not anywhere else 